field of medicine is based on many important theories and postulates. The germ theory of disease is one of the most influential revolutions in medicine. This theory in its simplest form states, microorganisms cause disease. Proposed in the mid-1800s, this theory was a revelation in the field of medicine. In addition, the germ theory of disease created a foundation for modern medicine, clinical practices, and cures. Today, this idea has not only influenced medicine, but also our everyday lives. The explanation of disease has taken on many forms throughout history. Beginning in ancient Greece, citizens believed that the gods were the cause of illness. The gods could inflict disease when they were angered or simply on a whim. This was widely accepted during 500 BC. In addition, they believed that disease was caused by superstition rather than scientific fact. Hippocrates challenged this belief by stating that the gods did not cause disease. Disease was caused by natural forces and could be found by examining the human body. Around the same time, Aristotle composed the theory of spontaneous generation. This theory proposes that life originates from non-living matter. This theory supports the idea that disease originates without any true cause behind it. This theory was widely accepted until disproven by the germ theory of disease in the mid-1800s. Louis Pasteur is one of the main contributors to the germ theory of disease. Louis Pasteur was born on December 27, 1822, in Dole, France, into the family of a poor tanner. Louis grew up in the town of Arbo. He gained degrees in literature and in mathematical sciences before entering an elite French academy. After serving briefly as a professor of physics at Dijon Lycée in 1848, he became professor of chemistry at the University of Strasbourg. Robert Koch was born in Klostal, Prussia, one of the German states. He was the son of a mining official. He studied medicine at the University of Got Göttingen and graduated in 1866. He then served in the Franco-Prussian War and later became district medical officer. A Nobel laureate, Koch became one of the founders of bacteriology and he developed his postulates to help support the germ theory of disease. Koch's postulates are, the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms suffering from the disease but should not be found in healthy organisms. The microorganism must be isolated from a diseased organism and grown in a pure culture. The cultured microorganism should cause disease when introduced into a healthy organism. The microorganism must be re-isolated from the inoculated diseased experimental host and identified as being identical to the original specific causative agent. These four postulates help to contribute to the formulation of the germ theory. When you talk about the germ theory, you have to talk about Louis Pasteur, but he is credited with the germ theory of disease. He was the first person who started thinking about this and working with this. It came about because of the microscope, because now you have the microscope, you can look at bacteria under a microscope. But with what he did, he worked with sterilization hospitals, taught them how to sterilize their instruments, wash their hands, keep the hospitals much cleaner. And that cut down on the, the number of bacteria then that you're passing from one person to another. The long journey to the disproving of spontaneous generation includes many of the most important scientists in Europe's rich history. The first example would be a gentleman named Francisco Ruddy. He made the first attack on spontaneous generation in 1668. He did this using an experiment involving rotting meat in a jar. According to spontaneous generation, the putrid meat would turn into maggots, even in the jars he sealed. Reddy believed that the maggots would come from eggs laid by flies. In his experiment, the jars that were sealed did not contain any maggots, showing that the non-living matter in his experiment, the meat, didn't turn into living matter, the maggots. Although this experiment disproves spontaneous generation, many continue to believe that living matter could come out of nothing. At times, even Reddy believed this idea. Microscopes also seemed to increase support for spontaneous generation, for people could now see many animalcules that appeared out of nowhere. John Needham wanted to see whether or not the theory remained true in his experiment. In 1745, he boiled chicken broth, poured it into a flask, sealed it, and waited. Since the boiling was known to kill microorganisms, no microbes should arise in the sealed flask. However, since microorganisms did grow in the broth, Needham believed that spontaneous generation was true. An Italian priest, Lazzaro Spallanzini, opposed John Needham. Spallanzini suggested that perhaps the microorganisms had entered the broth from the air after the broth was boiled, but before it was sealed. Spallanzini modified Needham's experiment by placing the chicken broth in the flask, 
sealed the flask, drew off the air to create a partial vacuum, and then boiled the broth. After he did this, he observed that no microbes grew. The critics of spontaneous generation argued that Spallanzini had only proven that spontaneous generation could occur without air. The theory of spontaneous generation was disproven in 1859 by Louis Pasteur. The French Academy of Sciences sponsored a contest for the best experiment, either proving or disproving spontaneous generation. Pasteur won the contest by building on the experiments of Needham and Spallanzani. He boiled meat broth in a flask, heated the neck of the flask in a film until it became malleable and bent it into the shape of an S. Air could enter the flask, but airborne microorganisms could not. They would settle in the neck. No microorganisms had grown just as Pasteur had hypothesized. When Pasteur tilted the flask so that the broth reached the lowest point in the neck, where any airborne particles would have settled, the broth quickly became cloudy with life. Pasteur had both refuted the theory of spontaneous generation and convincingly demonstrated that microorganisms are everywhere, even in the air. Joseph Lister was a professor of surgery at the University of Glasgow. Lister, inspired by one of Pasteur's papers, experimented with carbolic acid, also known as phenol, a derivative of creosote which had been used to preserve wood and abate the odors of rotting bandages. He discovered that the spraying of wounds in surgical instruments with and using bandages dipped in phenol prevented post-op infections. He was honored by the Warner Pharmacal Company in 1879, which named an antiseptic mouthwash, and by J. H. H. Peary in 1927, who renamed a genus of intracellular bacteria, also known as Listerella, after him. Lister is credited with the first antiseptic and the first sterilization of hospital equipment. One historical example of unsanitary medical practices was President William McKinley's assassination on September 6, 1901. President McKinley was shot twice by anarchist Leon Cholgos in front of the Temple of Music at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. One bullet glanced off his sternum and lodged in his left shoulder, the other entered into his left upper quadrant, then went through his stomach, pancreas, and kidney before lodging in his lumbar muscles. He was taken to surgery in the exposition's hospital. Dr. Thomas Mann, a gynecologist recruited for the job with unclean hands and probes, tried in vain to pull to find the bullet in the abdomen. He sutured wounds to the stomach. He eventually sutured the entrance wound without first inserting a drain. McKinley survived for eight days until he succumbed to sepsis due to the unsanitary conditions on September 14, 1901. An autopsy was performed and revealed the correct location of the bullet, as well as the wounds to the pancreas and kidney. The bullet was in a totally different location than man had been probing with his unclean fingers and probes. An x-ray machine was on exhibit at the exposition, but the doctors were reluctant to use it. Although Lister's, on the antiseptic principle in the practice of surgery, had been published 34 years ago, the mainline U.S. medical establishment had not yet accepted its teachings. Alexander Fleming is credited with the first antibiotic, otherwise known as penicillin. This accidental discovery has inspired the whole field of medicine to further research advances in antibiotics and antiseptics. Ernst Chain was an influential scientist who helped to further research the effects of penicillin. These antibiotics have cured many forms of diseases in humans and have increased life expectancy around the world. In conclusion, the germ theory of disease is a revolution in medicine because this theory instituted changes in hospitals and medical practices to minimize the spread of disease by microbes or germs, discovered that weak forms of disease could be used as an immunization to prevent stronger forms, and served as the foundation for modern medicine.